quest for an open marriage has gone wrong. It's been three months and I've been begging every day. I, female 25, met my ex-husband Charlize Mayer, male 29, at the Four Seasons Hotel restaurant in Toronto, Canada. Well, he is the one who approached me as I was also sitting alone waiting for someone. He told me that he was there to meet up with a client which postponed their meeting to the following week. So he stayed in the hotel until he met up with his client. He was a very sophisticated and full of enthusiastic human being. That's what I had figured out about him. He loved his job so much. I loved his appearance. His aura was clean and pure. I felt drawn to him for some reasons. Was I being sluttish? Charlize is a handsome and charming man. We had a chat and a couple of drinks. He was a very interesting guy, but way too serious and focused more on making money. He asked me out and we went on a couple of dates. I really thought I changed. I was not partying anymore or even going out with my friends, which is why I didn't think about telling him that I loved going out and exploring new places and partying. I actually thought it was not necessary because I had thought I had quitted that life when I got into a relationship with him. I just wanted to spend my time with him. I was in love. He was such a romantic person every chance he got. He would go all out to make me happy, but I was not fully happy. There was something amiss in my life, you know. In our relationship, a bit of vibe was missing. Yes, our intimate moments were over the top. It was everything, but I wanted more. We once went to Hawaii. I was so excited I couldn't believe that it was my first time leaving Canada. Ever since that day, we would fly out on each and every holiday. He proposed in Paris the city of love I couldn't resist. I agreed to marry him on the spot. I went home and told them good news. Months went by and we got married. I moved to his luxury apartment in Manhattan straight after marriage. He made me quit my job and said he's going to take care of me. He needs me at home and warming up his sheet. A classic man. I guess that's when the problem started. I had too much time on my hands. I didn't know what to do. He usually had meetings since they had promoted him at work. Name withheld for professional reasons. But we also traveled a lot and even bought a house in Miami for Christmas holidays. We don't like the cold weather in New York during the winter season. We have been together for three years. We had shared countless memories and dreams. But lately, I had been feeling restless. At the age of 25, I felt like I was missing out on my youth. Bear in mind, I got married at the age of 22, so I couldn't get time to explore and live my youthful life. I wanted to explore new experiences and meet new people. I thought that opening our relationship could be an answer. But I guess I was wrong. My thoughts got me kicked out and divorced. After a few years of being in a monogamous relationship slash marriage, I felt like something was missing. I loved her husband, Charlize, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I needed more. I wanted to explore my sexuality and try new things, but Charlize was against the idea of opening up our relationship. Yes, we did travel to some nice places, but he didn't want us to go to any clubs or any fun places. He only chose those serious places with serious people, and I didn't want that. I wanted us to live our lives to the fullest so that when it's time to have kids or grow old, we won't regret not living our lives to the fullest. I had tried asking him to at least let loose a little and allow himself to enjoy his youth also. But guess what he said? He told me that letting loose is for people who don't know what they want and have no goal and ambition. That statement alone left me tongue-tied. I somehow felt offended by it, but he would manage to shift from being serious to the funny, boring Charlize. Our love story had blossomed over the years that we had been together. It was filled with laughter, shared dreams, and unwavering commitment. As time went on, however, I began to feel a sense of restlessness within me. I'm only 25, and the world seems to be expanding before my eyes. I craved new experiences, yearned to explore different facets of life, and felt an overwhelming desire to spread my wings. I believed that opening our relationship would allow me to satisfy this yearning without sacrificing the love we shared. I didn't know who to talk to nor share my story with because I lost all my friends. I was not ready for a serious relationship, but in my mind I thought I was. I'm a city girl who loves partying and clubbing and exploring. I didn't think I would get married. I was against marriage. I used to say I will never get married, I wanted to have fun, but here I was walking down the aisle going to my ex-husband. Yes, my marriage was an epic fail. I wanted to spice things up in my marriage, but I guess I was wrong. It has been a couple of months since we have separated and I would be lying if I said I do not miss him because I do. So much. I regret even trying to make him understand why I wanted us to open our relationship because everything took the wrong turn and not what I had expected. So one day I felt like I was missing out. You know, always staying in the house was not what I had signed up for, 
and the fact that I would look at my friends' posts on social media, having the best time of their lives while I was glued in the house like a built-in furnisher. I missed going out. I was still young, for Christ's sake, to become a house furnisher. Yes, my husband was giving me money to spoil myself and go out to do shopping, but I didn't want that. I wanted to go out with my hubby, explore different places, and attend different parties and events or even clubs, get intoxicated together, make mistakes together, but I guess that was only a fantasy if you were married or in a relationship with Charlize Mayer. So that day I decided to just go out and have fun. Charlize was not around for the weekend. He had gone to one of his friend's bachelor parties. I decided not to go to the friend's bridal shower because the girl who was getting married to Charlize's friends was not my friend, and we didn't know each other that well. So I told Charlize that I would remain behind and meet him at the wedding the following day. Since I was married to him, I should always be there with him at ceremonies like this, even though I didn't feel like going, but I had to honor my husband and be his plus one. When I got to the nearest club, it was epic. The music was busting on top of the roof, people were dancing, and I felt at home when I entered the club's door. It felt like it was where my heart belonged. My happiness got to be in play. I bought my own drinks while enjoying the music. Some handsome, slim-fit guy with a nice-cut mustache approached me and offered to buy me a drink of which I declined for obvious reasons. The guy didn't listen to me. Instead, he bought more booze, and the conversation was flowing. It was really fun hanging with him. We laughed, danced, and even made jokes about each other's moves. It was what my soul needed. I felt at peace with so much happiness. Since that day, I continued going out, partying and clubbing with Trevor, the guy I met at the club. Male, 26. What I liked more about Trevor was that he was not afraid to live for himself. He was also working as an architect, but he allowed himself to let loose a little. He was not afraid to be wild and be himself without any fear of being judged. Trevor and I clicked. We had a lot in common. During the times of going out, Trevor would sometimes ask me to be his date at parties. As much as that was wrong in so many ways, but I felt a sense of belonging, you know. I felt at home, I mean he allowed me to be wild and carefree while he also does the same. It was like we were a couple that had an open relationship and it felt great. I wanted that with Charlize, but he didn't pay attention to my needs and desires. I always get tempted to go out clubbing and doing something crazy and let loose just a bit before I reach my 30s, but I always contain myself and not go out at all. I would discipline myself. My temptation ends being a thought. But there was a time when my husband left for a golfing trip. I could resist the urge of going out with my friends from college. I saw that as the perfect opportunity to break free from the monotony of my married life and have a little fun. So I started by cleaning the house and doing some much needed grocery shopping. But as the day went on, I found myself feeling more and more restless. I felt the urge of wanting to let loose a little. I needed to open my relationship with Charlize, but I didn't know how and where I could start addressing the issue or breaking the news to him. I didn't know how he would react and I was scared of the outcome. I had so many what ifs in my head, but I knew I needed to tell him about my desires. After a lot of thought, I decided to call the girl that I was working with. Her name is Prudence, female 29. Prudence and I were attending the same university, and she is the one who introduced me to the manager of the restaurant and catering company that I was working at when I finished university. That's how we got along. So I called her and asked her to join me on a date. Luckily, she agreed and told me that she wanted to introduce me to a new restaurant and a chilling spot that had recently opened not far from where we worked. So we agreed to meet in town so that she would take me to that new spot. Little did I know that the girl actually wanted to take me to the club, I didn't ask any questions because I mean I trusted Prudence and I knew that she wouldn't take me to a place that harms me or gets me in trouble with my husband. I really thought we were just going to eat, have a few drinks then later on before the sun sets we would part ways. But that wasn't the case with Prudence. Later on Prudence and I met and we had our lunch then decided to drink while I told her about my desires and how my husband had been absent lately. I even told her about my thing with Trevor. We drank and ended up enjoying the good music and the vibe. We had a couple of drinks and two guys came to us and asked us to join them. Because of Prudence's forwardness, she accepted the guy's request of joining them when things got hectic. While we were still chilling with the guys, I received a call from Trevor asking where I was. Obviously, I told him where I was. I don't know what was drawing me to Trevor, but I felt something deep for him. And it wasn't just a minor thing. I was just scared that maybe I was the only one feeling attracted to him like how I was. It was just dangerous and I knew that I had to try and ignore it for the sake of my marriage. I didn't want to lose my husband over lust or a fling. So Trevor came and booked us into a hotel nearby. 
I left Prudence when she told me that she and the guys were moving the party somewhere else. I knew that I wasn't going to join them, and luckily Trevor came on time. He, Trevor, had a way of making me feel comfortable. Well, this is when I realized I needed to loosen myself a bit as I was feeling a bit of guilt. We started to talk about life and conspiracies, and we realized we had something in common and drinks kept on coming. The music kept on playing and our conversation kept getting deeper, and I found myself drawn to his charming smile and kind eyes. He was just a breath of fresh air. Was I falling for the guy? I was also having so much fun with Trevor, but what I didn't appreciate in him was that he kept confessing his feelings for me. I knew that I was married and committed to Charlize, which was why I didn't consider Trevor's feelings towards me. I knew where my heart belonged, so when I told him to remember that I was someone's wife, he told me that he had noticed, but he couldn't live with the fact that he had feelings for me. Unexpectedly, I regretted myself and felt guilty after I kissed Trevor. Yes, I was intoxicated a lot to a point that I found myself craving for Trevor's sexy and pinkish lips. I couldn't contain myself any longer. I had vowed to myself to not do anything with Trevor that night. We were just going to spend the night together. I know I shouldn't have done that since I am or was a married woman. And what I did was breaking the vows that I had made in front of the Lord, both our families and friends. I knew that if Charlize was to find out about what I had done, things would take a huge turn for me and my marriage would either be in jeopardy or get destroyed completely. Our trip or my night with Trevor came to an end and I knew that I had to go back to my boring house, plus my husband was coming back, so I had to go. When I got home, I had found my husband already back, which was a shock to me because I didn't expect him to be back earlier since I had also tried to be back earlier than him. Well, I guess he had beat the traffic. He asked where I was coming from, so I told him that I had gone to a night away with the girls. But I left the guy's part aside because if I had mentioned it, hell would have broken loose. Frustrated and unhappy with what I had done, I decided to talk to Charlize about my desires. That day I had cooked a very nice dinner, his favorites only so we could talk about my issue. I explained how I felt trapped and that I needed some freedom to explore my sexuality since he has always focused on work and showering me with materialistic things, but never asked how I was, nor check if I am happy. I even emphasized that this wasn't about wanting to replace him, but rather about personal growth. I tried to reason with him, but he refused to budge. He believed that opening our relationship would lead to jealousy and heartbreak. And so, I made the difficult decision to put myself first. I knew that Charlize loved me and I loved him also. But love alone is not enough if you are not happy, right? You know, I hoped he would understand since he sees that I am always in the house doing nothing. It had become like I was a part of the house furniture. But Charlize was adamant that he didn't want to share me with anyone else. I explained my feelings emphasizing that I still loved him deeply, but needed more space to grow as an individual. Charlize, however, was taken aback by my proposal. I knew that he had never considered the possibility of an open relationship. To him, our relationship was built on trust and exclusivity. So my request caught him off guard and infuriated him to a point that he even asked if I was cheating on him and if I had gotten someone else from the clubs that I was going to and the trips that I had taken with some guy and kissing him. His question caught me off guard. I mean, how did he find out about all that? I was shocked and somehow scared about what he would do next, but I decided to deny all his allegations and told him to stop changing the topic. <laughs> Sometimes my husband and I would spend our weekends together, but it wasn't fun because he would always watch golf games and I would be sitting with him reading a book, which was purely boring for me. My mind was thinking about the trip that me and the girls had. I had been feeling neglected by my husband for quite some time, even if he was around. He was always busy with work and his golfing games never seemed to have time for me. I felt like I was just a mere obligation to him, rather than a beloved partner. I won't lie and say the girls' night was boring because it wasn't. It was actually full of life and fun. I enjoyed every moment of it, and I wished I could turn back the hands of time and go back to that night. Months passed. My husband had been too occupied with work and his golfing games. To tell the truth, golf really bores me. There is actually no fun in it. It shows that it's a game for rich people. So one day Trevor texted me on Instagram. I was so shocked about why he would send me a text on my Instagram while he had my number. But I didn't ask him anything. I just replied to his messages, which were actually a very good destruction because I was somehow bored at home. So he had asked me to accompany him to his friend's party. I hesitated at first because I didn't know what I would tell my husband. But God came through for me. And I really needed to get some air and let loose a little. I'd been cooped up in the house for way too long. When we got there, the party, I felt the vibe already. There were so many people, and I guess it was friends and maybe colleagues. 
I spotted his friends that I had met during that night at the club. They were with their partners who were very much friendly and full of fun. The music was blasting. Everyone was having their good time, minding their own business. And that was what I really needed. It felt so liberating to be able to be myself without worrying about what my husband would think. The next day, I woke up feeling a bit hungover and regretful. I had a bit too much to drink the night before and I was worried that my husband would notice when he got back. But as I looked in the mirror, I saw a confident and carefree version of myself staring back. I realized that I didn't need to be perfect all the time and that it was okay to let loose and have fun. Over the next few days, I continued to explore my newfound freedom whenever my husband was either at work or went golfing. I went back to my house and I found my husband getting ready to go out. Mind you, that time we had planned to spend the day together. He came down the stairs wearing his golfing clothes and came down with his kit. I didn't understand why he was wearing that, so I asked why he was wearing his golfing clothes while we had plans for the day. He just gave me a very lousy excuse and told me that his golf buddies had texted him and told him about the game that was taking place on the very same day that was supposed to be our day. My mood just instantly went down the drain. I was so angry at him, but I was also angry at myself for thinking that Charlize was actually going to choose me for one and not his golfing games or his buddies. I mean, why would someone promise to spend time with you and even reassure you that the day was only for us and we were going to switch off our phones so that we would not get any disturbances? But his big head switched on his phone and got his buddy's message about a certain game that was taking place just when we had planned something else. He had reassured me that he would be available for lunch and dinner. Later on, I had a hope that Charlize would have been back and we would continue with our day like we had planned. So I decided to cook all of his favorites for dinner. I had really missed my husband and that time was the only perfect time to tell my husband Charlize about my desires. So I prepared everything and even texted to come back home earlier. But to tell the truth, I wanted to ignore my feelings for Trevor. I wanted to forget about him and focus on my marriage, but it wasn't easy. He came back earlier just like I had asked him to. So we ate over a light conversation and I knew that it was time to drop the bomb again and address the elephant in the room with the hope that he would somehow understand why I needed what I needed. So after we had dinner, I asked to speak to him before he went to bed. So I told him that I really wanted to grow old with him and start a family, you know. I told him and reassured him that what I was about to tell him didn't mean that there was something that had changed between us because there wasn't anything. I literally said, I've been thinking, that's how I began. My voice was hesitant yet determined. I love you more than words can express, Charlize, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. His eyes softened, a smile playing at the corners of his lips. I feel the same way, Ronnie. That's how he would call my name. Short for Veronica. You're my everything. I then took a deep breath, gathering my courage. But I also felt like there's a part of me that's restless, that craves something more. I want to explore, to experience different things, but I don't want to lose you. I want an open relationship. Charlize's expression faltered, surprise mingling with uncertainty. An open relationship? I nodded, my heart pounding in my chest. Yes. I want us to be honest with each other, to communicate openly about our desires and needs. I still want you in my life, Charlize, but I need the freedom to grow, to discover who I am outside of our relationship. Silence stretched between us. The weight of what I had said really made things difficult for me. Plus, Charlize just went on a quiet mode. Finally, Charlize spoke, his voice barely above a whisper. I don't know if I can do that, Ronnie. I thought we were meant to be together, just us against the world. Tears welled up in my eyes as she reached for Charlize's hand. It was harder than I had anticipated. Please, Charlize, this doesn't change how much I love you, but I need this. I need to explore this part of myself. Charlize roughly withdrew his hand, his gaze distant. I need some time to think, Veronica. I can't promise anything right now. I knew that our relationship was hanging down the hill, so I had to expect anything from Charlize. So I first dropped the bomb of the fact that I wanted us to explore new ventures. So I suggested that we would open our relationship to any opportunities that would come with that statement. He calmly asked why I wanted to open our relationship, and I knew that when he was that calm it meant only one thing. He was angry, and I should expect him to do or say anything because of his anger. I furthered by telling him that I was ready to start our family. And I won't lie, I was ready to give him the child that he had always wanted. I mean, he was my husband after all. I basically told him that if he agrees that we open our relationship, then we would or should start planning for our child. After I told him all about my desires and what can actually help our marriage to have that spark. Our marriage was already in shambles, 
already in a very hard rocking place, so I had to find a solution that would help us. He didn't want to hear anything after that. He suspected that I had been cheating on him and assumed that since I wanted us to open our marriage or relationship, I was already cheating on him. I tried explaining everything in detail to him, but he just didn't want to hear it to the point that he ended up calling me names and told me that if he would ever find out that I had cheated on him, he would make sure that I suffer for the rest of my life. I just didn't understand why he was suddenly angry for addressing the underlying problem that we were facing and told him about my desires. We had a very heated argument that led us to even go to bed angry at each other. I really thought Charlize was being unfair and inconsiderate of my needs, but I couldn't tell that to him because he was already enraged and ready to attack. I gave him some space to at least digest what I had just told him, hoping that he would wake up the following day better and we would have a civil conversation like adults and married couples. Three months passed and I was still doing the same thing, begging Charlize to understand where I was coming from and my desires, instead of him listening to me and understanding or even trying to put himself in my shoes. He preferred to either ignore me and not come back to the house for days or we would argue, not the normal married people arguments, but a very heated one to a point that we even made threats and threw insults at each other. It was just a mess and tiring, but on the other hand, I was still seeing Trevor imagine. So one day I decided to just go out to get some fresh air and maybe by later Charlize would come home calm so that we would continue with the conversation. Later on, Charlize was back from work, so he came to the living room looking like he was ready to kill. His face and body language was full of rage. I couldn't even think that he might have found out about my abomination. So he looked at me with eyes full of rage, hurt, and disappointment. He asked to speak with me on the side. Without thinking about what would have made him so angry, I followed him to our bedroom. When we got there, he threw a phone at me. I got confused about why he would throw a phone at me, so I looked at him hoping to get the answer I had been asking myself. Instead, he told me to press play on the video that was posted on Twitter. So I did as told without thinking again because I wanted to see what had made my husband angry. When I pressed play, I got the shock of my life. Trevor had posted a video of him and me making out at his friend's house. Worst part, the video was even trending. I was trembling and shaking. I was lost for words. I couldn't even utter the apology because I didn't know what was happening. I had thought that nothing serious had happened between Trevor and I besides being in a sexual affair. I knew that Trevor had love feelings for me, but the way the video looked, it was really confusing me. And why do I not remember anything, especially the part that he posted on Twitter? I remember nothing about it. Charlize was super upset and asked if that was the reason why I had wanted to open our marriage so that I could do those nasty things. My heart was beating so fast like I was having either a panic attack or a minor heart attack. What made my blood rush like that was the fact that I didn't remember anything, and who would have been that heartless to post such a video on social media? I felt my reputation, my dignity, and my image being ruined. I just didn't know how to react to the video, so I just decided to go to the park to unwind and at least try to calm down. When I went back to the house after like four or five hours that I had spent in the park trying to digest and think about the video that was trending and the fact that I didn't remember anything, I wanted to know who would have leaked that video. I knew that I needed to find out. But the revelations really shocked me to the core. Okay, so when I got home, Charlize wasn't there. I called out his name all around the house and even tried to call him, but nothing. His phone was suddenly off and it was taking me straight to voicemail. I left him a lot of messages, voice messages, and text messages. He actually left me a letter that stated that I should sleep with one eye because I had made him a laughing stock, and he was going to destroy me just the way I had destroyed his heart, which got me really scared because I didn't know what he was referring to and what he would do. Never trust an angry lion because it can bite you roughly to a point that you would eventually find yourself useless and want to end things or disappear. And with the words that I had said, Charlize vanished from Woodlands, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and shattered dreams. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, but there was no sign of him. I searched every corner of our small town, hoping for a glimpse of his familiar face, but he remained elusive, as if swallowed by the vastness of the world beyond. As if my stress over Charlize wasn't enough, a truck came, well, a big truck, and repossessed the cars that were in the garage, my car along with Charlize's. I asked why they were taking the cars. They told me that they were reported as stolen and they were no longer getting paid for. I just couldn't believe it, you know. I tried calling Charlize again, but it was still not going through until I decided to just give up. I went straight into a depressing state and I really thought I was going to lose myself at that time. 
After the cars were gone, I received divorce papers, stating that the owner of the house wanted me gone within two days. I was so devastated and filled with regret, I found myself alone, questioning my choices. The days that I had spent in a hotel were hard. I was grieving for my marriage. I was depressed and felt like I had lost my heart. I didn't expect things to turn out this way, and the weight of my decision crushed me so bad. I later realized that my desire for exploration had come at a great cost. I reflected on the choices I had made and the consequences they had brought. I realized that I had underestimated the depth of Charlize's love and commitment. I had nothing under my name. I felt like my heart had been ripped off its cage. My health was not giving me any hope because everything was just too much. I had lost the only person who had shown me genuine love. I was happy in my marriage, but my greed and desires clouded all the good things that Charlize had done for me. I knew that I had to think of where I was going to go because I had no relatives in Singapore, so I had to try and make means to get home in England. Luckily, Charlize had taught me to keep some cash in a safe place just in case I get in trouble or something happens. So I took that money and bought a plane ticket. Days turned into weeks, and I was left to pick up the pieces of my shattered heart. As much as I hadn't healed from the breakup, but I had to start picking myself up. I left Singapore with a heavy heart. I had never thought that my desires would actually lead me to that kind of stage in life. I lost the love of my life. He just vanished from our town, and I really wanted to know where he was and if he was okay. Is that even normal for a person who got divorced and dumped like how I did? I really thought Charlize would understand my problems, you know, but I now regret even opening my mouth and confessing about my desires. I really don't know where to start looking for him because I feel like I owe him an apology for the heartache that I had caused. And though my love story had ended, the memories that I had shared with Charlize would forever hold a special place in my hearts. My healing journey has taught me the importance of individual growth and finding a balance between personal desires and the commitment to a partner. Do you guys think he can maybe forgive me and give me a chance to at least mend our relationship after what had happened? I truly regret what I had done to my husband and my marriage. I need any advice that you can give me. Please assist me. I'm drowning, really. I need some guidance and clarity on other things that are marriage related. So on this one, I need advice from married people and those who are divorced. Please tell me how I can deal with everything.